Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am the Omni Viewer, and I'm here to continue my journey into the realm of photographing my kaiju figures. This time, rather than venture outside, I'm going to stay inside and try a trick that I heard certain photographers mention when I was at G-Fest. They said that sometimes they use the TV as a backdrop, not just having it be a blank screen, but to actually have something on in the background and use that as a backdrop to set their kaiju figures against. And I think I have a good idea of how I'm going to implement that. So first, I'm going to give you a bit more information about what I'm going to be doing. So just for starters, a couple people asked what kind of camera I was using for this whole thing, so I figured I'd show you. This is a Nikon AF-S Nikkor. I and I don't actually own this, I'm borrowing it from a family member, but I do have access to it. That's what I'm using. It is a high quality camera. You can get some really good shots with it. So I'm still figuring out how to use it, of course. That's part of what this whole series is about. But if you were curious what I was using, there's your answer. And these will be my subjects for today's photography session. I've got four big figures and two smaller figures. The big figures on the left are the 10-inch Bandai, Kiryu, and Final Wars Godzilla. Uh, the ones on the right are some older figures. The uh, one's a Godzilla and one is copyright friendly Godzilla. Clearly not an actual Godzilla, but the design is inspired by Godzilla. And the smaller ones are the Jack Pacific King Ghidorah and Rodan figures. Now why am I going with two small figures and four larger figures? Well, because during my first one of these videos it occurred to me that I was using relatively small subjects and maybe that was affecting how the camera was perceiving everything. So while I still want to mess around and see what I can do with the smaller figures, I figure, well, pardon the term, I have a theory that the larger figures might have an effect. They might help me to get better imagery because I'm not working with something so small that the lens needs to zero in on or potentially not zero in on and wind up completely missing. So there you have it. That's what I'll be working with this time. Now a little trick I've heard certain kaiju photographers say they do for their photography is they use their TVs as backdrops. They put images or something on there and use that as a background for their monsters as opposed to setting up shadow boxes or going outside or something. It can allow for, say, more abstract shots or shots you might not be able to get otherwise. So what I'm using here is a little something called ambient TV. Uh, just something that plays ambient music and different shots or video footage of various themes. It varies what you go with. Uh, thanks to the date that I'm filming this, there are still a couple of holiday themed ones, as you can see. But um, I'm just going to pick a couple of these at random, uh, set my kaiju subjects in front of them, and I'm going to see what I get. The next thing you see will be those images. So. Here we go. Unlike last time, I'm not going to be posting all of the pictures to DeviantArt because a lot of these did not turn out well at all. I started trying to take pictures of the Jack Pacific Rodan because I had this idea of setting him up in such a way that against certain backdrops it would look like he was flying over the landscape. The first shot here, I was too far away, you can see the TV and everything around it, completely broke the illusion, so that was a bust. For the second picture, I got closer, and it looked okay except for this bizarre shadow. And I didn't know what that shadow was until I took the third picture and it finally dawned on me, that's the shadow of the telephoto lens. See, in order to have Rodan in the shot and be able to see the background, I was angling the camera 
up a little. I was down and angling the camera up. So whenever the flash went off, it caught the shadow of the telephoto lens. At this point, I decided maybe the issue was that the Rodan figure was too short. I still think it's a well-made figure, but for the purposes I was trying to use it for, it just was not working out. I needed something taller. So I tried doing the same kind of shot with the Ghidorah figure. At first to similar effect, as you can see the shadow is still there, but when I tried pulling back, well, again the illusion was ruined. So at this point I figured, clearly these figures are too small for the kind of shots I'm trying to get. If I wasn't trying to frame things so specifically, maybe I could have made them work, but for this sort of thing, no dice. So it was time to move on. I had the bigger figures, so I started with Godzilla, and instead of trying to do a scenery backdrop, I went for something a bit more abstract. I took a trio of test shots to see how it would work, and the figure was already proving much easier to work with than the smaller ones. Like I said, this is like a 10 inch tall figure. That's significantly taller than the previous Jack Pacific figures, so that made it a lot easier. It was a larger subject, easier to focus on, but of course as you can see from these shots, I was still just far enough away that the effect I was going for wasn't going to work. And up until this point, I had been moving closer to the figures, my whole self physically. For my first official attempt, I decided to try just focusing the lens. I had gotten mixed results with that when I took all of the garden pictures, but I thought maybe things would be different here. And boy were they ever different. I took this Godzilla figure from three different angles against this sort of swirling, color-changing pattern. The first picture admittedly didn't turn out the best because the face, being closer to the lens, came out just a little bit blurry. However, everything else worked. This was the kind of shot I was going for. I just needed to get Godzilla at the right angle so he would be completely in focus and the background would frame him just the right way. This was the second result, and again, I think this worked out quite well. I didn't pause the background at any point. You play this on ambient TV, it's in motion. I felt that would ultimately look better. And by luck, I managed to capture the background at just the right time that it frames Godzilla at this angle quite well, I think. Having thus succeeded, I moved on to Kiryu. This was the same theme I was using for the 10-inch Godzilla, a little theme called Glow, but eventually it goes from swirling cloud-like patterns to something that looks a bit more computerized. So I got him from three different angles, and again, I think this turned out quite well. It's interesting that when contrasted against the orange, he's slightly more in silhouette. Makes sense, I guess. The orange is fairly bright. But either way, it wound up working. I thought it presented a nice sort of artificial, computerized-looking backdrop, and that works for a mechanical monster like Kiryu is. After that, I made one last attempt with Rodan. This was the result. Yeah, uh, this was bad. And I tried it with a different, slightly taller Rodan figure, but the background was completely out of focus, so you couldn't really tell what it was. Had this been a more abstract background, maybe it would have worked, but actually no, it wouldn't have worked because I wanted it to look like Rodan is flying over something. If it had been an abstract background, it would have just looked like he was looking away from the camera. So, at this point, I officially gave up trying to get that sort of shot. Unless I get a bigger figure at some point of Rodan, it's not going to work this way. So I moved on to the generic not-Godzilla kaiju figure. I took a couple shots of him from the same angle. One is in front of an urban landscape, and the other is in front of a natural landscape. Surprisingly, both of them came out quite well. The urban one, I didn't frame it quite right, so he doesn't have a lot of room at the top for his head, but I reframed it for the mountain shot, and... That's exactly the sort of thing I was going for. I think this one looks quite good indeed. So I brought in the similarly sized older Godzilla figure, 
set him up against a different background. Similar thing happened where the first picture didn't quite give him enough headroom up top, so I adjusted and got the desired shot. I chose this background because I figured it would give a more Monster Island-y kind of feel to the whole thing. Plus, it's an interesting shot because it's sort of like it's going from dusk to dawn. Perhaps that's an artistic expression of how Godzilla goes from being a villain to a hero in pretty much every series he's been in, at least that Toho has made? I'll let you decide. I did decide to get one last shot of Kiryu against an abstract backdrop. Now it's a much larger image than this that's just streaks of black and white. It's a close-up of something, so I'm not exactly sure what it was supposed to be. But I managed to get it in just the right way that Kiryu is sort of right between a streak of white and a streak of black. I think it's kind of interesting it wound up framed that way because Kiryu in Godzilla against Mechagodzilla is framed as sort of a potential savior but also potential danger. Somewhere between white and black and here he is in the middle as a big old shade of gray. I don't know, maybe I'm reading too deeply into my own art. Still think this one turned out okay. Then again, it does look kind of like the other ones, just less colorful. Then I tried one more backdrop thing. The theme I was trying to use for the overhead flight pictures that didn't work, which is called Nightlight, had a couple of other shots that I figured could work for land-based monsters. First, there was this shot of water reflecting light. I thought that was sort of a nice middle ground between something that's actually real and something that's more abstract. So, I placed the generic kaiju in front of it, and I got these three pictures. This one, my framing was off. You can see the bottom of the TV screen, so that one's junk. But the other two, I accidentally created two contrasting images. One of them, the background is slightly darker, so the monster is illuminated by the flash, you can clearly see all the details. The other one, the background is brighter, which casts the monster in silhouette. Now, as dramatic as a silhouette can be, I think both of these shots turned out quite well. They're nice opposites, two sides of the same coin. So with that done, I decided I still wanted to get something kind of like the flying theme, but maybe I didn't necessarily need it to be flight. Maybe I needed a shot of a monster approaching the shoreline. And there were a couple shots in this particular ambient theme that could work to those ends if I framed it right. So first I tried a couple of shots with the older Godzilla figure, and they look good. It has that desired effect, since we're from the waist up, it does kind of create the idea that Godzilla might be wading through the water towards this landscape. Yet, it just felt to me like something might be missing. So, I switched that Godzilla out for the 10-inch Bandai Final Wars version. This was the result, and actually, I think this worked much better than I ever expected it to. Background's kind of out of focus, but you can still tell that it's some sort of urban cityscape. Godzilla's body is in focus, and then his tail, which is closest to the camera, is out of focus, which kind of makes it look like it's in motion. I did not plan for it to be that way. Honestly, I kind of thought that, like the last round of pictures, it would turn out that the closer it was to the camera, the more in focus it would be and everything else would be blurry, but this, this was the best shot I got all day. I figured that's the note to end on. Don't want to take more pictures that I won't be satisfied with when I've just gotten one that good, and I called it a day. So this particular method of getting kaiju pictures is interesting, but also far more difficult than I thought it would be. When I'm trying out new things like this, sometimes I do have a tendency to jump into the more advanced stuff, and sometimes that means I bite off more than I can chew, but sometimes I also get lucky and manage to do it right, uh, some of the time at least. I don't know if this is a particular method I'll be doing very often, but I got some good results, some bad ones too, but the good results look really good, and you'll be able to find those on DeviantArt. Next time I'll probably try a setup that's a little bit easier so I'm not messing around with so much, but for this particular round, I'm far more satisfied than I was the first time.
That being said, I don't think I'm going to rely on this particular method too often. This'll be a once in a while sort of thing. And even then, it will only be for figures of a very specific size. And that ends this round. Until such time as we meet again, this is the OmniViewer signing off. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it as well as subscribe to the channel for more content of a similar nature. Also, check the description for links to our Twitter, DeviantArt, and Patreon pages, as well as the Amazon link for the novel Operation Red Dragon The Daikaiju Wars Part 1, penned by yours truly. Thank you all, and we appreciate your support.